Hi, I'm Rob Stringer from High Point Access and Rescue. In this series of videos, we're going to talk about uh, collapse rate. So the first one to kick it off with is a comparison of a few different uh, pulley systems. And we're going to use collapse rate as one of the criteria for evaluation. So we've got our bit of a scenario set up here. So we've got uh, a load that's over an edge, comes up through a high directional back into a pulley system which is anchored. So back at the anchor here we've got a progress capture device, we've got a haul team there and we've got uh, some sort of rope grab or, or haul cam along that line. Um, so our criteria, first one is ideal mechanical advantage. So if we look at ideal mechanical advantage it's the mechanical advantage offered by the pulleys disregarding friction. Okay, so it'll be a whole number and in this case it'll be 5 to 1. The practical mechanical advantage, we've got two practical MAs there. One with a sheathed progress capture device and another one with a sheaveless progress capture device. So an example of a sheathed progress capture device might be a uh, Prusik mining pulley with a Prusik or it um, could be something like an MPD. That would be a common one these days. The sheaveless progress capture device, it's pretty typical that we'd take a descender or a lowering device and we'll use that device as a progress capture in a haul system. So the best example of that might be a Petzl ID. I think that's fairly common these days. Uh, collapse rate. So the definition of a collapse rate or definition of the collapse rate is the rate or the speed of collapse of the pulley system relative to the speed of the load. Okay, we'll talk about that a bit more as we go. And the last one, number of reset points. So in this example here, we've got one reset point. As we haul on this, the load comes up. This becomes chock-a-block or it fully collapses. The progress capture device holds the load while we reset that one point. So there'll be one reset point in that example. Okay, so let's, uh, let's start by drawing some MA. So the first one we want is a simple MA. So we've got a load comes back over the edge. So we're going to treat this line as our edge, which is here. This area up the top here, we're going to draw our mechanical advantage, represents the area up on the flat. So we come up, we go through some sort of progress capture device, which is anchored. And then we come back down towards the edge. Uh, and this one we're going to come back up again to a second pulley that's anchored. Back down towards the edge, and we've got a haul. So I'll see if we can put a pulley on here. And we'll attach that to the line with some sort of haul cam. Okay, so that's our first one. Our load's down the bottom, our haul system's at the top, and this would be a simple 5 to 1. Okay, the next one is a 5 to 1 as well, but this one's complex, so we're going to come up through a progress capture device that's anchored again. And we're going to come back down towards the edge, put another pulley on there, which has got a rope grab onto the main line. And we're going to come back up again and do the same thing. So we've got another pulley up here, which is to attached to that part of the rope down to the hall. So this is a complex 5 to 1. Um, the best name I've seen for this is a zigzag 5 to 1. I like descriptive names, ones that you can easily pick. Uh, third mechanical advantage. Again it's a 5 to 1. We come back up through our progress capture device. It's anchored. We come down towards the edge again with a pulley. We've got a haul there. Now I'm going to use a different coloured pen to represent what may be a different rope. Or it could be the end of this rope. So this rope goes back into a bag maybe. And then we take the tail and we run the tail out. Attach that to that line. Comes back into there. So it's like a little 2 to 1 that's interior to a 3 to 1. 
<coughs> so again, that's complex. And again, it's a uh, five to one. There's been a few names I've heard for this one. The one I like the most is a crevasse, five to one. Okay, so on the surface, it looks like we've got three mechanical advantage or pulley systems that will offer the same mechanical advantage, but, uh, but that's not true. As soon as we introduce friction into the system, our numbers are gonna be different. So we've got a simple MA, Within the simple MA, there's four sheaves. So we know that there's going to be friction generated there. So we're going to have a loss in there. So the efficiency we use for, for pulleys in this sort of situation is 90%. So we're going to say that these pulleys are 90% efficient, which means that the effort I put in on this side of the pulley, only 90% of it goes through the other side. The other 10% burn up in friction. Okay, so that's pretty typical these days. Um, it's easy to get 90% efficient pulleys. So if we had four 90% efficient pulleys in there on our sheaved progress capture, we would end up with 4.1 to one on our simple MA. So we lose a bit, we almost lose one out of there. If we use the do the same on a zigzag, we got 4.2 to one. And on the crevasse, we've got 4.4 to 1. Now, I guess how we derive that is a, that's a subject for another lesson, but um, that's what the outcome is if we have 90% efficient sheaves. Now, if we, if we replace that device with a sheaveless progress capture, like an ID or a similar device to that, we're going to add considerably more friction. So typically with the testing we've done on this, we end up with 20 to 25% efficiency through there. So if I put a unit of effort into there, I only end up with a quarter of that coming out this side, if, if I'm lucky. Generally it's less, but we'll run for 25% in this case. So we're saying 90% efficient sheaves here and a 25% efficient sheave there. So that brings us down from 4.1 to 3.6 to 1 as our mechanical advantage. So we lose a considerable amount. A zigzag, if we put a sheaveless progress capture there, we're going to end up with 2.4 to 1, all else being equal. And on the crevasse, we end up with a 3.8 to 1. So if we looked at that, and that alone, we'd say that the crevasse is the best, followed by the simple, and lagging a fair way behind, we'd say the zigzag, if that was the only thing we were measuring. But uh, obviously that's not the full story. So the next thing we're gonna look at is collapse rate. So like I said before, collapse rate is the speed of collapse of the pulley system relative to the speed of the load. Okay, so for all simple mechanical advantages or simple pulley systems, the collapse rate equals one. Okay, so that's an easy one to remember. For a complex pulley system, we need to work out what the collapse rate is based on applying a unit of speed to the load. So down here, if we say that the load is gonna move in that direction at one unit of speed, we know that this rope grab and this pulley must be moving in that direction at one unit of speed. So if we follow this load line up, it goes up through a pulley at the top or through the progress capture and then it comes back down in this direction. So this rope grab and this pulley must be traveling in that direction at one unit of speed. So if we have this pulley, traveling pulley moving up at one unit of speed and this one moving down at one unit of speed, it means the two are collapsing together at two times the speed of the load. So our collapse rate becomes two. Okay, so we'll apply the same thing to the crevasse. So we're gonna say that the load is moving in that direction at one unit of speed, which means that this rope grab and this pulley must be moving in that direction at one unit of speed. Because we've got a little two to one in there, this pulley must be moving in that direction at two 
units of speed because it's moving twice the speed of this, this pulley. So we have a travelling pulley moving at two units of speed in this direction towards a stationary pulley. So our collapse rate would be two. So those, that pulley is collapsing against the stationary pulley at two times the speed of the load. So basically what that tells us is if we're going to refer to a simple, the zigzag needs resetting twice as many times as the simple for any given movement of the load. So does the crevasse. The crevasse needs to be reset twice as many times as the simple for any given movement of the load. Okay, so each time you reset, that means work. So there's, a, there's, uh, there's work that has to be done to reset the pulley system every time. So you've doubled it if you've got a collapse rate of two. Last one is our number of reset points. So we set up here, this has one reset point because we've got one rope grab. So two with the five to one simple, it's got one reset point. But the zigzag, it's got two. When we collapse that pulley system, we've got to reset this rope grab and we've got to reset that rope grab. So not only, not only do we have twice as many resets as the simple, we've also got to set, reset twice as many things. So there's almost four times the amount of work in resets. With the crevasse, we've got one reset point in there. So this green line that represents that rope it's a set length throughout the whole exercise, it doesn't have to change, so there's only one reset point in there. Okay, so we've got a bunch of information there. Some of it might make sense to you, some may not, but uh, we'll catch up if, if it doesn't. If, uh, if we were looking at the zigzag in this scenario, we'd have to say it wouldn't be our ideal choice, because particularly if you've got a sheaveless progress capture, the efficiency is, is half of what we were expecting. We were building a 5 to 1, we end up with a 2.4 to 1, so that's very inefficient. And the fact that we've got to reset that thing twice as many times as a simple, and each time we reset there's two things to do, so that makes, uh, makes extra work. I'd probably, discount, I'd probably discount that configuration for this scenario. It's good in some other areas, but certainly not this one. So we're left with a simple 5 to 1 and the crevasse 5 to 1. So if we look at that, we've got slightly better mechanical advantage on the crevasse. It's definitely better than the simple. But on the other side, you've got twice as many resets. So you've got to ask yourself, is it better to have that little bit more efficiency and have to reset twice as often? Or do we, do we sacrifice a bit of efficiency for less resets? Okay, so I hope you got something out of this today. Um, there's going to be more to come, so this is only the first part of, of a multi-part series on collapse rate. So the next one we'll do is a bit of definition and how to calculate the collapse rate for any given simple compound or complex pulley system. Thanks for watching.